In front of us right now is a torso, a plastinated body that is having all the organs exposed in front of you. So if I remove this entire uh, part, which is composed of all the viscera, the lungs, the heart, the diaphragm, and that's the partition between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. So the organs uh, which are occupying the abdominal cavity, the liver on the right side and the stomach on the left side and the intestinal uh, coils, I'm lifting up the entire organ system to show you the position of the kidneys. Now, once the entire viscera of the thorax and the abdomen have been removed, all we can see is the posterior body wall. So by just looking at these ribs, we can assume that this is the thoracic posterior wall. And here, because the ribs are not evident anymore, so this is the abdominal posterior wall, okay? The kidneys, we can see over here are present on either side of the vertebral column or the spine. They are bean shaped structures, quite small in size, and all and the entire urinary system is retroperitoneal because the, the peritoneum is the covering of the viscera of abdominal cavity. These structures of the urinary system are lying along with the other structures of the posterior body wall are lying behind the peritoneum so they are known as retroperitoneal structures and they are that means they are partially covered by peritoneum i'll be talking about that partial covering uh, in, a, in much detail on a diagram you can see over here that there are two bands of muscles like a right and a left band of almost vertically placed muscle running from the lumbar region up to, like it's going down to the pelvic region. This muscle is known as swass major muscle. So we have a right and left swass major muscles. They are in close relation with the kidneys. And then the kidneys themselves are mostly lying on a muscle on either side, you can observe this muscle is known as quadratus lumbarum muscle. Okay. In the midline, the kidneys, they are like having a structure like the abdominal aorta passing in front of the vertebral column. And this is the, 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 the inferior vena cava and the renal vein. We'll be talking about each and every structure in detail in a few minutes. I want you to appreciate the exact location of the kidney in the human body. They are lying close to the posterior body wall behind the peritoneum and lying below the rib cage. Okay, they are partially covered by the ribs, the lower lip, ribs. Okay, when we talk about the kidneys, usually there is some numerics involved. So I would say that it's four two, one, four, four. By four, I mean it's four inches long. By two, I mean it's two inches wide. By one, I mean it's one inch in thickness. The other four, by that I mean, usually each kidney on either side is spanned over the four vertebrae. So on the right side, the right kidney, which is a slightly at lower level, so it would be spanned from T12, 12th thoracic vertebra, the uh, L1, L2, and L3. On the left side, the left kidney is slightly at a higher level. We'll, we'll discuss why later. So the left kidney is, is like uh, T11, T12, L1, and L2. It's just the, the intervertebral disc between L2 and L3, the lower pole of the kidney will be lying. So it, it, 
spans, each kidney spans up to four vertebrae. And then the last four is each kidney almost weighs up to four ounces. So it's easy to memorize this, the, these numerics like four, two, one, four, four. So here in front of us, there is a model showing all the structures, but we are focusing over the kidney. So I want to, to describe the surfaces and borders of the kidney on this model. This is the superior pole of the left. So here is the left kidney, which is in our focus right now. Uh, the, the poles, there are two poles, the superior pole, it's all covered by an endocrine gland, which is known as the adrenal or the suprarenal gland. We are not going to cover this gland in this session because it's an endocrine structure. But we just have to remember that the upper pole or the superior pole of both kidneys are not exposed. They are covered by a cap-like structure, which is the adrenal, because it's adding to the renal tissue, or suprarenal, or it's lying above the renal tissue. Okay, so the superior pole, and then there is an inferior pole. An anterior surface, which is facing the camera, and a posterior surface through which I'm running my finger and it's facing the board. So the kidney has two poles, two surfaces, and two borders. The medial border and the lateral border. You can appreciate the fact that the lateral border is highly convex and it's smooth and glistening. While the medial border has many things going on in this, in this region. The medial border of each kidney is concave. It has a depression in the middle. That concavity is actually a longitudinal slit like opening that is known as the renal hilus or the hilum of the kidney. By hilum, I mean it's like a door through which Certain structures are entering the kidney and certain structures are leaving the kidney. So here we can see that the structures which are entering the kidney is the, the renal vein, that is the anterior most structure. Then behind the renal vein is the renal artery. The left renal artery is entering through the hilus. Then there is a structure which is lying even behind the, the artery. That is the renal pelvis, which you can see over here is the light blue or whitish structure. The renal pelvis, it continues itself downward as the ureter or the tube which is carrying urine, okay? So we have an arrangement at the hilus or the medial border of the kidney, V-A-U or V-A-P vein artery ureter or vein artery pelvis which is renal pelvis okay the the anterior surface is covered by many abdominal viscera while the posterior surface i as i mentioned and i have shown you in the the original specimen that the posterior surface of each kidney is resting against the quadratus lumbarum muscle as well as the intercostal spaces, the muscles of the intercostal spaces, okay? So the left kidney was in contact posteriorly, the posterior surface of the left kidney is in contact with the 11th and 12th rib along with the intercostal spaces between the 11th and 12th, like 11th and 12th rib. And then the quadratus number, all right? While the anterior surface is covered here, it's been covered by the peritoneum. And then inside the peritoneum, there are structures or the organs which are, you know, known as the abdominal viscera.